even if you are wrong. All right. Okay, let's uh, finish up. I'm going to start with Crafting Gamer because I don't think I got a chance to start with him yet. And even if I did, well, he's going to start first anyway. I don't have my note card on me. Who cares? Um, all right. So in this segment, we are talking, by the way, folks, thanks again for all the super chats that came in last segment. I will get the right doohickey up here in a moment. and I'll find out exactly where we are to see how close we are to the uh, to the giveaway in a moment here. So, Crafting Gamer, uh, we're starting off, we're talking about role-playing humans, demi-humans, humanoids, and aliens. Now, we're going to talk about integrating humans, demi-humans, monsters, and aliens into a campaign. So, that's kind of the advice side. So, how do you create a cohesive party that includes humans, demi-humans, and monster races? So, the point here is you have to. I don't care if you're the player. Well, you kind of have to be in the Game Master side for this. But I don't care if you're the player considering this or you're in the Game Master side. But... Y- how do you create a cohesive party that includes all of that? Well, I start not at a bar. <laughs> uh, what I mean not by that what? is if you can start the bar. players off not at a bar. Okay, got it. If you could par- start the players off with, say, a mini adventure, something that brings them together to begin with, I find that really starts off for a nice cohesion because all the players immediately get an idea. It's not just trauma. Oh, well, we're yeah. It's not just, oh, well, I can do this while I'm at the bar or even not saying anything they can do. And then all of a sudden, oh, says when could you hurl a lightning bolt from your sword? I could do it the whole time. Why did you tell us? You didn't ask. That's some wrestling crap right there. <laughs> well, I find hey, that more happens more often than I care. None of your business what yeah. I can do. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So I, I find putting them off in a situation where they can measure each other for lack of a better term is a great way to get them to bond like excellent example we uh i was doing a heroes unlimited we had a because i i this is where we play the slightly different i do not like all gargoyles being evil i play two races of gargoyles in my games the church gargoyles and the demon gargoyles so someone was playing a church gargoyle a human and an alien for a heroes unlimited campaign I got them all to meet by the the gargoyle who was playing an ancient master. Snuck for some reason decided to sneak into a junkyard, which is where the uh, guy who could turn into stone was. And then I had the uh, guy who came in from a ship crash his ship. Interesting enough, because he failed a few rolls. Now all this went down with the rock guy attacked the uh, gargoyle, and then as soon as the guy, uh, as soon as the alien popped out of his ship, he literally leaped out and said, "I challenge you to see if you are a worthy ally." Not my intention, but everybody got along afterwards very well. Okay. Trauma bonding. Okay. Yep. So I was going to ask you a different one, but I'm going to ask you this one because I'm going to give you a, a, a twist on that scenario you just said. So the question is, what strategies do you use to manage potential conflicts between different races in your game? Now, if I live in a society where gargoyles are evil, <laughs> that's that's what they are. I'm going to murder first, ask questions later. You know, that ethical question of, do you kill goblin babies? Yes. Yes, every day, every every chance I get, because every goblin baby I kill is is a goblin that that's not, you know, our wording my my family members. But what if you um, raised it at home to be a normal, uh, mem- productive member of society? Then it's not a goblin. That's, that's why. <laughs> so <laughs> it just wouldn't happen sooner or later it's going to go nuts and it's going to try to burn down your house or you know light you on fire or put a trap in your you know so no, no, it's, it's it's exactly the it's exactly the same as as saying that no 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 i tamed this orangutan he's fine <laughs> he won't rip off my face no yeah he's right gonna, he, he's he's gonna snatch your 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 uh your your sack like a like a paper towel and rip off your arms that that's what the orangutan will eventually do. It's not if, it's when. Same thing with a goblin. Yes. Sooner or later, he's going to be a goblin. And so, that's the way it is. So, murder at first, ask questions later. So, what strategies do you use to manage people like me, the potential conflicts between different races in your game? Uh I like to start in that as well the trauma bonding to begin with, but I like to uh kind of talk to players let them know what's going to be going on and if someone's going to have a problem with it i uh i've never really had a problem with it admittedly 
but I would, I would handle it. Like, could you at least try if it's something that you can't handle, just can't handle, we'll talk to the party. And if you end up being kicked out, I'm sorry. But I have to okay. Well, no, 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 this, this is good. Let, we'll actually do kind of a little back and forth that, on this. Do that, you, that is she legitimate. Said that, it is. Um, yeah. But here's the thing it, it ruins the verisimilitude. And typically, in my experience, people who play the weird races, well, I want to play against type or I want to play the weirdo. Again, remember, if you watch the previous videos, I said I've done this and I enjoy doing this. I'm not being a hypocrite when I say this, I'm using my experience to say that I don't trust it when other people do it because they, they do. They play them like. Humans in funny skin suits, or they're emo and against type constantly. And oh, don't judge me for the rest of my species. Why not? <laughs> like, like, why wouldn't I do that? This is how all of you are, not just in my experience, but this is how all of you are. Do you know why there is a book written about Drizzt? Because he was the one that got away, the one, the only one. But with that in mind, yeah, exactly. The scorpion and the frog. There you go. Great, great example. Uh, he was the one that got away, yet every single AD&D 2nd Edition game I've ever played in, ever since those stupid novels were written, included some jerkwad who wanted to be a The draft. other one that got away. Yeah, the, uh, the other yeah, the other one that got away and always had some weird, oh, I have a magic helmet. I have a magic mask. I have a magic... Oh, I'm not affected by the sun because the game master didn't have any balls to say no. Now, usually in 2nd Edition... Game masters I dealt with had the balls to say no, but apparently when it came to Drow, they didn't because they all had these little weird hard ons for Drow for some stupid reason. So now, now getting back on, on to you, uh, crafting gamer here, I don't trust it when most people play those races because they're not really playing those races; they are just playing a human in a in a funny skin suit. Now I want to play in your game, I want to be at your table, but can you at least tell me that this character that is going to be like this, I won't murder him off second one. Is he going to be playing that character appropriately, for lack of a better term? That would actually be expected on my part as the G as uh, telling the player from as the GM. You uh, you got to play the character right, otherwise you're not playing the character. You're playing a caricature, and it's probably not even a good one. That's a really good comment. That is a really good comment. You're not playing a character. You're playing a caricature. Now people will flip that on its head. And they'll say, well, isn't that what the, the bioessentialist tropes are? Caricatures? Yeah, that caricature is what's supposed to be played. In, in terms of, I, I, I'm kind of going opposite of what he said, but to, but to make the point, if you're going outside the scope of what it's, what it's meant to be, and, I'm, and correct me if I'm wrong in this crafting gamer, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to straighten this out so that we use the same terms for the same concepts. Playing the character means maintaining those caricature tropes. By not doing that, yes. using the word that you just said, you are actually just doing a caricature and you're not really playing a character. You're just being a human in, in a funny skin suit. And did I say that correctly? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Because I would argue, and, and this is why I wanted to make sure I use the term right, that, that the tropes are the caricature and you're supposed to do them. But you're saying by not doing them, playing against type, that's a caricature. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can't disagree with generally what you said there. And I will always give somebody the opportunity. Like, okay, like I did with, well, the bugbear was so grudgingly. And plus, it was 5e, and I was already grumpy that we had switched to 5e. That was like, whatever. Um, so, all right, let's, um, Heathen Dog. Oh, beautiful. Uh, how do you create a cohesive party with humans, demi-humans, monsters, and alien races? And, okay, if you're not going to do it as a game, well, actually, no, you've run Earth Dawn before. Sure. Yep. So, now that didn't necessarily include monsters, but <laughs> unless you consider I'm well, you know, in, in in Earth on there are no there are no monster or alien player characters. They're all name givers. Uh, well while true, do you remember the throw was it not the throw handbook, the Theron handbook with those three weird races, one which is the Jackalman, which is kind of the normal one, then the one that was like half demon, oh, half the, the tree, tree or some creature, the Ula, Ula, yeah, or whatever that, yeah, whatever is that the nonsense? They were called. Yeah, I I just I just ignored them. That was, that, that's the easy part yeah and as as a game master you get to choose which books are in your world it's great it's mm -hmm. almost like you have all power over players because <laughs> you do you get to choose the the classes that they they can choose from you get to choose the races the pool that they can choose from you get to choose all of the supplements that you are using for your game Mm -hmm. And this is how you you control the players and make sure they don't make dumb decisions. 
because players are dumb. They're, they're, they're going to screw you if they can. They will <laughs> every time. So if, if you allow Jackalman, then you are, you, you could be setting yourself up for interplayer conflict. If, 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 if you, if you allow certain, certain races as players, you have to be ready to deal with, with a conflict that, that could arise. The best answer is don't, don't do it. And what's great is they come from a whole different land. Uh, exactly. The jackal men come from they're, basically they're over Egypt. there. It's great. Yeah. We, yeah. we don't know. We don't know. La la la. Uh, there, there, there be dragons. I don't know what yep. we're talking about. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. But, uh, no, uh, humans, humans and demi humans, uh, in, in most games, uh, the 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 uh, everyone understands the basic tropes and, and basic stereotypes and they can they can pretty much get along on their own but if you as a game master allow the dumb races the stupid things the the i'm gonna think outside the box my my brain is so open my you know, my, my head's so open my brain fell out no then you are setting yourself up for con- for irreconcilable conflict at the table like the 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 whole uh, the whole ogre, the uh, uh, an ogre ogre as a player character in 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 D and D, using all the proper tropes, every single other player character would kill him for XP on, if like, nothing else. For XP if nothing else, right? <laughs> you know that's the way it works. Every single time you go into a town, oh my oh my god, what is that thing? Pitchforks and and torches come out instantly. That is not a table I want to be a player at. It isn't. That is that is a conflict for conflict's sake. It's stupid. I'm not going to do it. Humans and demi humans, the everyone knows how to get along. <laughs> and no, 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 no. If if an elf and a dwarf cannot get along in the same party, they're not doing it right. It's the player's fault. It's not the game master's fault. It's the player's fault. They should know how to do it. I, well, I mean, I, I don't want to quibble over the term, uh, so I'll go with the get along. I mean, I look at the Gimli Legolas thing. I think in the movies it was played a little more jokey than it was at least at first in the books, where it yeah. seemed to be a little more serious but still friendly. Enough. Yeah, no, no. As long as, as long as you can get along with those negative jokes, let's go to something you will remember. Uh, how, yeah, let me get it right. <laughs> Elemental Isor. Elemental Isor. Right. Yeah. So, so, but I mean, there was the same basic concept. He was playing the crazy. I was playing the Borg. And because he had that dumb extra attack per round, he could always whittle, dodge all my stuff, take one attack and whittle me down, whittle me down, you know, and you know, he got kills where I should have got the kill, but he came at the last second. It was, it's funny, but it was a, it was a competitiveness and I'm not going to lie as a, as a player, sometimes it's like, mm-hmm, God, I know, I I know. You. But, but you as a player have to handle your character's responses. Right, right, right. Because that's what I'm you, saying. That's exactly, exactly what I'm saying. And you did. You you managed your character's response, so mm-hmm. the whole table didn't freaking implode. Right. But but there is some mental gymnastics that everyone is going to break their legs trying to do, and and that is certain monster races as PCs. You just can't. You are not flexible enough to to do the mental gymnastics that your character is going to accept this damned thing sleeping in the same camp as you. It's a ridiculous idea. Mama didn't raise no idiot. I'm going to kill this thing on sight. So I don't use them. Don't don't use them. You're just setting yourself up for for unneeded, unwarranted conflict. You're creating your own problems. Stop it. Stop creating your own problems. Get out of so, your own way. I had a different follow-up question for you, but I'm going to I'm going to ask you this one because I, I, these guys are going to talk a lot of palladium, which is good, yeah. but I want to I want to j- drop out of that scope for a moment. Using Battle Lords again as an example. Okay. If you remember in our original group back in the 90s, uh we had both a Fentari and an Eridani. So for the people who don't know what they are, real quickly, they're two races that are methane breathers, but they they have an eternal war against each other. One is a very honorable, if in a kind of a lawful evil sense, uh, Japanese Bushido-style alien race. The other one is rogue pirate type, 
the bounty hunter, you know, jerk off. So neither of them are not the nicest guys out there, but at least you can trust one and not the other. They hate each other for historical reasons we won't get into. They hate each other. When they see each they other, they should never be allowed in the same party ever. Right. Another another one. So he mentioned before in an earlier video for those who are watching on the video side, where somebody carried around like uh, like a you know, Chewbacca carrying Yoda, right? Well, I played a race that dang near I don't know if they enslaved him, but conquered the big giant you know, mega people because we were so smarter, Python more agile, or whatever it's called. I forget what they're called. Well, he he was a Ram Python. I was a Scizorak. Oh, yeah, I just wasn't going to go Python. into the race names, but yeah. So he was so we with our ego and their brutality maybe makes a little more sense than the Eridani and the Fentari. But again, you should not have those two in the same party. No, so, no. so I say all of that. What are the strategies you would use to okay. manage those potential in that instance? The only reason that I could, could reconcile all that and probably the other characters could reconcile all that is because it's the first time we ever we ever played Battle Lords and we didn't understand the actual. Well, he, he, he basically said, "Hey, you guys are a bunch of mercenaries working together. You guys have a general cause of making money, and you know whatever." Yeah, I exactly. But but if we were playing our characters correctly, it wouldn't happen. That that group dynamic would have imploded immediately, and we would have to make all new characters. And, and that's it so if if you want something like that to work you have to keep your players in the dark about the reality of the game setting or just change the game setting that's it that's what you have to do to make it right the only other option is tell the players not to play their characters correctly which some players would think you're an, an idiot for saying so something like that. we're probably going to get a lot of hate on that comment that you just said right there but i'm going to piggyback on this and say i 100 percent agree with them 100%. Yes, it's called playing the character right. And if you want to cry about it, cry. But this is the problem why I think that we need to gatekeep in the hobby. Isn't because I don't want more people in. I want people who respect the games, who respect the settings, respect the tropes, respect all this. And that's what we're losing with all this stuff like, my tiefling is a good guy. No, no, your tiefling isn't. Your tiefling is evil and needs to be killed on sight. You are a, literally a walking omen. <laughs> like, like <laughs> every T link should be should be named Damien. Yes. <laughs> there you go. All right, Timothy Ferrelli, ending with you on the same question. How do you create a cohesive party with humans, demi humans, and monster or alien races? I'm not gonna go palladium this time. Uh there's two two ways of doing this. First okay. way, uh, advanced science fiction. Star Trek, um, Traveler, um the the um it, all of these, have, all of this has come to think of. You are a member of a crew. It's the science fiction equivalent of you start in a bar. You're a member of a crew. You all have the same common goal: live, survive, and follow the captain's orders. Um, the other wait, thing, wait, is this military or mercenary? Does it matter? Yeah, paramilitary mercenary organization. Go. No, no. If it, 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 because it, if it's military or paramilitary, okay. If it's mercenary, I might accidentally leave you on the planet. Bye bye. You still got to follow your your captain's orders. No, I don't. I'm a mercenary. Yeah, well, you're going to get spaced. Um, <laughs> hey, not if they don't know it's me. <laughs> hey, you know what? You rolls your dice. You takes your chances, yeah, right? right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. the The second thing is more. Um, Post-apocalyptic, and the most common with this, uh, in my opinion, would be like uh, the, fall, uh, the Fallout uh, system, where you have the ghouls, you have the super mutants um, that you are part of, <laughs> um, part of a uh, part of the town or a part of the community that you're interacting with, with uh, maybe a vault tech survivor or whatnot. So. Uh, it's it's easier, in my opinion, in these in, in these settings where your options are either so advanced that an orc being able to read is a reasonable thing, or your your options are so limited that you don't have much of a choice. 
Okay. Um, so how do you integrate the, um, the lore and I guess cultural backgrounds of different alien species, species into your game world? Um, the, it all depends on uh, the, have the, in science fiction, you know, you're, you're time for, well, with all this, with any setting, time travels on. So your characters would be uh, celebrating uh, certain historical instances. Uh, for example, um, maybe they have an equivalent to Christmas. Uh, maybe they celebrate birthdays or they celebrate a excuse me um a, a important event of you know when they uh, independence event as a some form of independence day you every so often you have to have a holiday or you should have a holiday a reasonable holiday for one of the species to celebrate to keep it lively keep it uh, reasonable because because these things happen okay anything you guys want to piggyback on with each other there yeah for the ram pythons that day is called thwack em stick day oh dude thwack em sticks are the best thing ever invented <laughs> even though I, I don't play ram pythons I, if, for people who don't know what that is a thwack em stick is basically a big tree trunk that they call a club uh, remember, if I remember correctly, the ram python is like nine feet tall. It's crazy big. And they go batter up and they swing, and then it's got a little speedometer built into it. <laughs> it tells how hard they hit somebody. Got to give them credit. You know what? If, if, if a heavy metal lizard alien is going to, you know, beat something up, it's probably going to have some sort of... It's going to keep score. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, all right. Um, okay, well, hey... Uh, Heathen Dog, this Sunday, did you know that we are starting our first episode of Gamer Talk with Kevin <laughs> yeah. and Sean? Oh, sorry, Kevin Sambita and Sean Roberson of Palladium Books. That's right. So I look forward to seeing people on Sunday at 1 p.m. Central Time. Or if you're catching this on video, the video is probably already posted because those pop up right away. These take a month. Uh, so check out our videos where we talk with Kevin and Sean. And theoretically, we're going to talk to them about wilderness travel in Palladium or Rifts, I cannot talk specifically. specifically. Uh, apparently, people don't use the wilderness or, or something enough in there, which blows they our mind. They they hand wave ninety five percent of the planet. Yeah. Just, oh, you you just go from town to town. Okay, you you made you made it. Which I literally my entire experience in Rifts has been the exact it's, opposite. The exact opposite. <laughs> exact opposite. It it's ninety five percent of of North America is wilderness. You uh, cities are are. Like even even a city that's fifty miles apart, it's going to take you a week minimum to traverse that. Stuff's going to go down, man. Something's going to go down. But apparently, according to, to Kevin and Sean, people hand wave this. Yeah, it's something. a ridiculous concept. I can't wrap my brain around it. I want them to make it make sense to me, but I have a well, sneaking suspicion they're not going to. Well, we're going to talk about uh, that. Uh, so. Uh, also leaning into the how to do a theater of the mind hex crawls and so forth so um yeah i look forward to talking about that we're also going to talk to them about if i remember correctly it's occs and uh oh Over yeah and underpowered. it's really funny i posted five uh youtube com uh community posts out there and the first couple like, oh it's rifts is unbalanced oh palladium's unbalanced oh the occ they, they got worthless occs and overpowered occs then I posted one out there that says, okay, which ones are overpowered? Which ones are worthless and why? Crickets, crickets, crickets. Oh, the, 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 the lack of balance is beautiful. So you complain about it until I make you stand up Put to your, your words. Yeah. yeah. And then it's like, oh, no, it's beautiful. It's great. Riffs is a wonderful setting. Um, you can't have it both ways, folks. But one of the things we are going to talk about is the concept of worthless OCCs versus overpowered OCCs. And... If I can find a comment or two of somebody actually mentioning that now, you know, that, that would be good. Uh, but, and then that may lean into um, uh, MDC versus SDC. It might. I also have a surprise segment for them if we've got time, but it's going to be 100% up to them. And I'm not going to tell anybody what that is. So uh, 
No pants. Anyway, days. that's uh, that's what we're doing next week now uh, on Sunday and next week uh, Friday, October 11th. We're going to be talking all about zero prep gaming. I forget everybody. That, uh, oh no, it's going to be the basic expert. Victor Gorchev and Mr. Max Boyvant comes back. That's right. If he's still watching, because I know he's watching earlier, Reactionary Principal Gaming. Mr. Max will be back on the show, and they're going to talk about zero prep gaming and try to convince me that it's not just good for one shots only. So, um, I've actually read some comments about one shot. Uh, I'm sorry, a zero prep that actually had me go, okay, if that's what it is, but I don't consider that zero prep. I consider that low prep. So maybe it's just a definitional term. I don't know. Okay. Well, how, how about this? Uh, the, the, the last, uh, live stream call the call of Cthulhu game. I did, I had the, the, uh, characters pick their characters randomly. I had them pick the, the time frame, and I had them pick the city. No, no. I, I had them pick the time frame and their characters. And after they did that, I chose the city took, took 10 minutes to think about it and then went. I consider that no prep because yeah. I had no idea what was going to happen until it happened. Probably was, yeah. But that was a one shot. Yeah, because that's the only time it works. Well, unfortunately, I don't have room for you to be on the panel next week, but uh, it'd be uh, awesome to see you fight against uh, the basic expert where I can just be a host. Uh, anyway, there were two more chats that I do want to read, and uh, I prefer games where magic and demi-humans are very rare. It's why I love the Dragonlance setting. Fair. That's fair. And uh, uh, I feel the diversity definitely leads to drought paladins and mermaid necromancers. Yes. Yes. Too much diversity is bad. Yeah, diversity itself isn't a bad thing. It's the mismanagement of it. Yes. You can't diversify your way out of of, uh, bioessentialism. You can't. Sorry. Apparently he then talk start a couple more here. You know what the chain of command is? It's a chain I beat you with until you learn who is in command. Yeah. True. And, the, and the idea, yes, mercenaries do have a chain of command, but in a cinematic universe, you have a lot of betrayals. You watch those yeah. movies, read those yeah. books. Yeah. They're, they're in, in, in all of the books and TV shows and movies of, of a mercenary band, there's always one guy who will literally sell everyone else out for like the right shiny thing. You know, Even Jane. Always, although he yeah, did come Jane, around again. Jane in, in, uh, in, in Firefly. Exactly, exactly right. Yes. Oops. And then lastly, uh, oh, I let the players do it. I think you already commented okay. on this. No, no, no. The, oh. the the only reason I starred that is because this sentence is the worst sentence a game master can think. And if you say it out loud, I don't want to know you. I don't want to know you. You don't give the players any power. They'll never let it go, and they'll always want more. Ridiculous. Absolutely. Hey, can you show your shirt? Will I? Uh, yes. Make one other response here. Uh, violence. I'm not going to put that up. Your comment. If you want to direct that towards Heathen Dog, I think that's a good comment to direct towards him. But not right now because it's off topic for us. But I do think that you have a, a, a good question there that maybe we have to consider. So uh, there you go. You can buy that shirt on our Redbubble store. Link in the description. <laughs> I want him to wear that to a convention. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right. Before we go into our final question, as actually, let's do this as I uh, bring you guys up. Who am I starting with? I don't know. We're going to start with Timothy Frelly this time. Um, as I bring each of you up, go ahead and remind us uh, who you are, what you create, and where the people can find you on the internet. Uh, so integrate that into the answer. You can start with the end with it or whatever. Just make sure to shill yourself for a moment. So, Timothy. What advice would you give game masters and players for creating rich and diverse campaigns while staying true to racial species or alien stereotypes? When you're making your character for the whatever campaign setting you're in, you do have to be mindful of what it is your race is, is known for. Dwarves are made for crafting. Elves are made for weed. Uh, Halflings are made for feasts. And uh, you have to be aware of what's happening. At Characters and Dice, I will help you show on YouTube how you make that with your character and get it in a presentable format for your Palladium Fantasy enjoyment. So you utilizing that, you keep me be mindful of what they what they're known for, and so you can get in your mindset what's coming up, special holidays, events. Um, how you interact with everybody else, the fact that elves and dwarves 
don't like each other. How do you want to interact with that? So yeah, you have to be aware of what's going on. And you know, if you need help, you know, come let me know and we'll get you on the right path. By the way, now that's how you integrate your channel into an answer. That was awesome, sir. That was good. That was good. Um, last time. So uh, what uh, what methods do you use to develop interspecies, interracial, whatever, relationships and alliances in your campaigns while maintaining the tropes? So how, how do you, how do you how do you uh, have the dwarves and elves? Just as an example, you pick whatever two races you want. How do you have them operate with each other? And I'm not talking on a character level. We're talking on a societal level. Uh, still maintain their tropes. Trauma bond on a grand scale. Um, you have to have that that big threat, and as the players, it's their response, their job to get their side, their team to the table to address that big threat. So if, you, if you've got a dwarf that's ultra stubborn, you were two seconds late, you said you were going to he be here right now because the dwarf mind says my word is my, my bond, but, you know, whatever you know, terminology you want to use for that. I, I, you know, my honor is at stake on this. And again, we're not talking Bushido honor, we're talking you know, dwarven honor. Uh, and you're an elf and you're like, whatever, man, it's about five o'clock, you know, the sun's still up, whatever. And that whole idea that dwarves just don't understand that flightiness and the elves are like, wow, you're so stuffy and just by the book or, or whatever. And it makes it very, very difficult for the two races to have any sort of cohesion when when dealing with the relationships on a grand scale, how do you represent that? You put heathen dog in the center of it and have, it'll become the mediator. <laughs> That's throwing a grenade in there. That's not going to work. <laughs> be Something's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> you you shut up. You're not human. You shut up. You're not human. All right. Y'all got – that's heathen dog. <laughs> See? And that's that it. brings them to the table. They're, they get in line and they do what you need them to do. Okay. <laughs> All right, Crafting Gamer, uh, what advice would you give GMs and players for creating rich and diverse campaigns while still staying true to racial, species, alien, stereotypes, and tropes? Uh, I had something that flew away. Wait, what? Uh, oh, uh, He had something he lost. I had it. something that flew oh. away. Yeah. Uh, I use note cards. <laughs> no pad. Hmm? Do you want me to come back to you? I, I, Do you need to phone a friend? <laughs> I, I try to keep things so they make sense between uh, everything. Like, do the, even if, even with my my elves that hate everything, do they trade with the dwarves? It's an unfortunate necessi necessity. Why? Because the dwarves can and can get and can produce metals the elves simply can't and vice versa there are certain materials that the elves have that the dwarves can't get because they're not surface dwellers is it a palladium so thing and i don't like each other reason. Not necessarily i no. think so actually a general thing okay so the reason why i say that is because the elves elves have mithril yeah but i mean can't get chain mail, for example is a thing in D D. but i also if you're not talking D D, I don't want to i'm just talking general yeah. i'm talking palladium okay Fair enough. No, general, yeah, but mostly plating because I know plating the best. Um, of course, I mutate bulls. My my dwarves, my, like I said, my elves are neo Nazis, but my dwarves are basically um, very advanced Romans. Okay. I mean, I, I don't give them exact Mediterranean for obvious reasons, but their mentality so if you've is got very if you've got your Japanese elves and your Roman uh, dwarves, I mean, uh, th still again, I, I don't know, is it Japanese based on Bushido or based on anime? Uh, I'd say based off of Bushido. Okay. So Roman, the Romans had their own set of honor, so to speak. The, obviously, Bushido has, uh, has that in spades. How would you have them interact? Uh, it, uh, again, at a 10,000-foot view. It, it would be very much like when the Europeans actually went to Japan. The the Jap the Japanese kept them in their own little area, and while they were there, they did not eat Japanese food. They demanded of rich European food, and that's I mean, how they I were Dutch. I mean, what do you want? 
Yeah. The, the, the elves, the dwarves might accept the elves in, but the elves would probably prefer to have their own thing where the elves are just going to keep the dwarves at arm's reach during the trade at best. Okay. So there, there'll always be that dynamic where we don't really want you here or we don't really want to be here, but you have something we want. So we're not just going to give up either. So the, the, the whole thing is uh, uh, cohesiveness through necessity. Yes. Okay. So what techniques, again, this is on the game master side, I get 10,000 foot view. What techniques yeah. do you use to highlight the unique perspectives and skills or feats, powers, whatever term you want to use of each race? I try to do it as organically as possible. Like, for example, the dwarves. You're not going to know a dwarf can make a certain type of weapon. Like, we'll just use as an example, a magical claymore until it comes up. It's like, oh, so you need, not like he's trying to hide it, but more along the lines of, I'm not doing the whole I'm flighty thing. It's just the fact that I'm not trying to like in your face thing. It's like, oh, I can create a sword that will help you slay the dragon. Oh, you can? Yes. Can all dwarves do this? Not all, but a good chunk of us. And otherwise it starts going from a special feature or ability or like something, uh, something special to, oh, yeah, it, I'll just hammer out another magic sword. So you, you got to choose how you introduce it and how much you introduce it. Otherwise, it just becomes nothing. And I think okay. I'm speaking cohesively. No, no, you are. You are just I, I keep cutting you off. So I'm trying not to do that this time. So uh, for once and the last question of the last segment, I'm finally trying not to cut you off. Um, all right, Ethan, dog, what advice right. would you and the answer can't just be don't do it. I know, I know, well, I what know. What advice would you give to GMs okay. and players? Letting creating? go of the idiocy of humanoid monster and alien. Let let that go. Human and demi-human. Two, two things a game master can do to make sure there is a good possibility of co party cohesion. Number one, everyone makes their characters together at the same time. Mm-hmm. If everyone is, is creating their character together, all the players will have an understanding of the characters every other player is making, which makes it easier for them to make excuses to get along. And that's number two. You as a game master have to tell the players, yes, you are an elf, you are a dwarf, you are uh, whatever race of dicks that, that you are. You as players have to get a reason, create a reason, make an excuse to not murder each other on site and actually get along. This is where you as players can now shine as role players. You have to play a dwarf, but you have to play a dwarf that gets along with that elf. Go. You're hampering the players. No, you're giving the players direction. Directionless players are awful. You don't want that. Nobody wants that. You're giving the players a direction. Go in that direction. Run as fast and as far as you want. Go. Yeah, nothing says that an elf and dwarf have to kill each other on sight. They no, just don't they understand don't. each other. They're just exactly. frustrated with each other. Yes. You, you have to create your own excuse on why you respect him or begrudgingly respect him or or uh you know you share the same could, oxygen with him yeah sh share the same air with this schlub you know <laughs> there you have to create your reason and stick to it and you say the same thing to the elf you're an elf this is this is a dirty little little hole digging mole man right that that's that's what your race feels like but you for some reason respect him enough to listen to him and back his plays why go it's up to you go so with on those two hang on with 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 those two uh techniques unless your players are just bad it should work itself out all right now that's good that's good for the party 
But on a 10,000 foot level, how do you handle in-game prejudice or discrimination between full-on races and species? Okay. There is, in, in any world I have, there is only one kind of irrefutable racism or speciesism that cannot be overcome. Humans and demi-humans versus monsters. There is no gap. I mean, there, there, there is no bridge on that divide. It is absolute. There is no getting along with a monster race. Sorry, it's not happening. Two completely diff different ideas. But going over to to humans and and demi humans from a from a game master point, this is this is this is how you play it. Everyone lives in this world. Uh, elves and dwarves have warred with each other. Humans have warred with everyone at some point. <laughs> but the wars, for some reason stop and there are times of peace why sometimes it's because we ran out of people to throw at the problem sometimes it's that other times is a truce was brokered that means there is a way for these two races to get along there is a way whether it be necessity they have they have a, a product they're exporting that we direly need to 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 enhance our kingdom so we will begrudgingly deal with them because they they give us this great resource. It could be that. Or or it it could be that the humans and elves uh hammered out a uh, an agreement and then married off high-level families and then had children who were half elves and the and these the, the and and the half elves are the bridge between our two species and everyone's all kumbaya. Could be that. I wouldn't do that, but it could be that. You know, something like that. So you as a game master have to create the ability for these excuses to make sense. Your job is to give the players enough room to make it make sense. That's it. I like the, the force. Heavy lifting. Forced into it. it's like elves hate the dwarves, hate the humans, or whatever. Or maybe I shouldn't use hate. Distrustful of, don't want to associate with, but. And during the underground, the goblins are are breaking through the underground to the dwarves. The orcs are attacking from above. And now, wait a second, what's going on here? You come to find out that there's something malevolent going on. And the the three main races, you can throw in the little half pints yeah, in there whatever. if you want yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have to work together to solve the problem. And in, yeah. in doing so, what everyone else said, trauma bonding. Everyone, yeah. everyone, said, trauma, everyone said trauma. But it doesn't have to be that. Like like I said, uh, uh, trade. Trade is, 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 a, is a great equalizer in war. To, to, I'm sorry, is, is to, to stop war because, you know, if, if they make something that we desperately want and we make something that they, they desperately want, even if we don't like the smell of each other, we will get along for this resource. You know what I've never seen done well based on that? Hmm. Elven magic versus dwarven metal. And what I mean by that is <clears throat> the arms race side of it. As we all know, in war, the start of World War II was much different than the end of World War II. Yeah. The start of the Gulf War was different than the end of the Gulf War. How many F-111s did we have to have flying around to versus, you know, having stealth fighters and so forth after? The, the point being is I would love to see a game out there or a campaign. It'd be more of a campaign setting out there that started like, here is day one. Just for the simplicity of discussion, uh, you can have up to chainmail armor on this side and you can have up to third level spells on this side. And then have that escalate. Oh, we got the armor that stops your spells. Well, we've got new spells that go by. Again, oversimplifying that, but you get the idea. I'd love to see an arms race version of that at, at some now, point. Hang on, hang on. That is, that is very, very human. That is not elven. That is not dwarven. That's a human trait. The adaptability. True. So I would not use that be, because it kind of breaks the tropes. Well, elves. I mean, they still invent that. things. They just take no, a lot I, longer. No, I to understand. Do it. I understand. But but the the constant one upmanship, like in uh, in in human human society since the beginning of time, the 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 fastest, strongest, and best innovations were done because of war. Mm -hmm. That's it. You know, be, because we are against the wall, trying to survive. That's when you know necessity is the mother of invention. 
I don't want to die. That that's a necessity. So I, I got to make better. Well, there guns, you go. The humans armor. are playing the middleman in between the two, brokering this. Because what do we like? We like money and we like power and we like things like that. Okay. We can sell just, all these advancements to them. Boom, we're mercenary humans. Now you just turned humans into Ferengi. Good job. I didn't think you'd do it. You did it. Why not? That's awesome. <laughs> At least some. Come on, some humans would do it. Doesn't mean sure. all. Yeah, fine, fine. Some humans, do, <laughs> some humans do that, but uh, it, it, that would be interesting. But it, personally, I think that that's more of a of a of a human trait. The whole, that's you know, a, a, the whole, uh, you know, a, advancing through through war, stuff like that. But yeah, and as as a game master, the whole ten thousand view, I would I would I would give the players enough room to create their own solution, and then I would tell them, listen, you have to figure out a reason why you're dealing with this elf or dwarf or or halfling or whatever on a day-to-day -day basis and trust him with your life get a reason now everyone making their characters together you have the option of having a background together a before day one story together that is really the best way the best way to do it have a backstory together you met 10 years ago and uh, the, the, uh, dwarf was, 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 was separated from his war band or whatever. And he wandered into the woods cause he didn't know where he was going found by the other player character elf as, as you a, as a young 10, thousand as, foot view here though. Yeah, I know. I know. This is an example of, of how you give the players enough room to create their own solution. That's what you do. Everyone's creating their characters together. Everyone's going to understand everyone else's character, and you have the and you have the option for the characters decide to do collected backstories. You've basically solved all the problems right there. So give the players enough room to create their own solution. That is your job. That's it. Okay. Well, I mean, I already advertised. Crafting Gamer, did you advertise your channel when it was your turn? If not, you should probably take this follow-up time to shout out your channel. Yeah, I think I forgot to. Hi, I am the Crafting Gamer. I am, at this particular moment, uh, not making any videos. Hopefully, as soon as I get my new computer to actually work properly, I should be able to. I admittedly won't be making them as often, but I'll still be making Robotech videos. And I'm going to be adding to my channel the crafting extra of how to steal from GW legally. <laughs> they GW have claims extreme... everything. <laughs> They have extremely wasteful kits, and I'm going to show you how to make like Tyranids and how to double your uh, double your miniatures. Nice. Okay. The, Sounds the good. Miniature version of creating generic drugs. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Insulin's $5. I'm, I'm for it. All right. Uh, did we have... Oh, there's only one. Oh, maybe two. I think this is a new one. A uh, weird guy for five dollars says manage conflict between dwarves and elves. I encourage it. Conflict is the core of storytelling. You want conflicts and race wars are easy. Hey, you know, some people say it's too easy, but I think that it's just such a historical precedence in like every fantasy setting ever, <laughs> every good fantasy setting ever. I agree with them. I don't care how simple it is. You can change it up a little bit, but I think it makes sense. It's simple and it's something you can go in a million different directions once you're started with it. So uh Along the same lines of uh, character interactions, if I'm understanding you correctly, uh, Heathen Dog, is yeah. that you're suggesting for maybe the dwarf character, especially in a futuristic setting, to go to school, to go to college and get a degree in liberal arts so he can understand the elf. Is that what Wait, I'm no, from you? No. Wait, what? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I, I, I said give them enough room. <laughs> To 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 figure it out themselves, but don't give them an, enough room to where they go in the weeds, which is that. That would be going into the weeds. No, no. Uh, wait, 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 wait. In your background, did you suffer catastrophic brain damage? No? Then that's not going to work. Try again. Well, you, you did when you went to go to, go to liberal arts. I mean. Yeah, you, you obviously, you're, you're, you're a dwarf with brain damage. I didn't roll that for you. Try again. Well, remember, there is the concept of the beardless dwarf or the outcast dwarf, however you want to look at it. So, I mean, exist. if you... If that is you, but remember, you, there are negative consequences to it. Other dwarves are not going to look upon you fondly. No. You need a 300-pound dwarven woman with a beard on her chin, okay? Yeah. I, I, I don't. <laughs> well, no, I don't want one, but you need one. 
<laughs> well, if she says that and she's 300 pound bearded dwarf, I'm just going to say yes because I don't want to <laughs> die. <laughs> but I will be crying inside the entire time. Um, and then uh, Daryl says, uh, anyone ever use elves like ElfQuest? They're not much younger than Tolkien elves. I have not used them, but as the not comic book guy, I guess was the only comic book series I ever collected. And I used uh-huh. to have issues 1 through 30, started collecting the, the Blue Ridge Mountain ones and forget why I didn't get that entire series. And then somehow between me getting out of the Air Force and a few years ago, they're all missing. I First stole ones them. I ever read. Love Elfquest. It's the only comic book, and I don't remember what issue it was, and I probably shouldn't say this, you know, but I was like, how old was I, like 20? 18 i don't know um that made that brought a tear to my eye somebody died i don't remember who it was but <clears throat> and i was like that's sad but wow. that's the only that's the only comment i starred so uh i think we're any any final words that you want to get out for each other as far as the the topic goes are we ready and go ahead Tim. another one for me um either dog keep in mind about you're saying how the elves of the dwarves you know that the, that they Develop the technology. Keep in mind, their wars take millennia to happen. So, yeah, I mean, it's yeah. You, he's absolutely right. He's absolutely right. It's it's not an arms race at that point. It's just normal development in the middle of a war. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's not an arms race to us. And actually, I was envisioning that. I just didn't say it. Um, but but the, the the point that I'm saying is like you can use the historical context of the game where again, it, it, this isn't a one for one. I'm just amazingly oversimplifying this. But I'm just talking about you know. Elves are supposed to be magical and fey, right? So give them magical uppity ups. Well, maybe proto dwarves didn't have magic resistance or a twenty percent chance to have everything freaking fail that they do. But you can in, in start to incorporate stuff like that as they become more metallic and more stone and more more stubborn. Whatever the elves become more flighty and magical and oh, part of the cosmos. Whatever nonsense that elves do. That, that's what okay. I'm trying to say. Hang like, on. hang on. I think I'm picking up what you're putting down. What you're saying is that the elves and dwarves made each other. Kind of. Yeah. 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 It was the conflict. They, they went more and more into their specialty to fight their enemy. And yeah. then their specialty became them. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. That, that's why in Palladium, the elf dwarf, dwarf war ended with freaking a, rune magic nuclear bomb going off in freaking the elven capital well, well let's also look at how long was that war somebody put it in chat it was six thousand years know. i don't even know it was okay six thousand years okay we're in 2100 effectively ad what is six thousand years ago let's just round it off four thousand bc what was happening then nobody knows <laughs> not, not for sure right, right. The, the, you, you get the point though Four four thousand bc uh we we have some cave drawings you know we got we got you know maybe one or two civilizations that we can dig yeah, into we have we have no civilizations that are still alive from back then by like a lot and yeah, yet well, that that's how long one of their wars was yeah, right that's so, crazy th- that that's that's absolutely something that i think could be neat to play into that's all i'm saying i, I i'm not i'm not directed like again oversimplified i had to because i mean it would take days to talk through every nuance and so forth but uh anything else that you guys want to address okay then i want to thank very much the panel tonight heathen dog timothy Frelli, and the crafting gamer i hope their perspectives entertain actually i should put up the little thank you sign I hope their perspectives entertained and educated you and whether you agree or disagree gave you some food for thought for your gaming sessions. If you enjoy this discussion, please like the video and subscribe to Legion Myth and to all the panelists whose links you can find in the description. And with that, I hope each and every one of you will put this up here. It's got to be up here for like 20 seconds, but I do sincerely hope that each and every one of you comes by on Sundays for our talk with our gamer talk episode number one. Have a wonderful week.